ยตรงอ่ะเขาไม่ได้ต่อเนื่องมากว่าพี่ลุงที่นี่ต้องมาแล้วใช่ไหมทาง Good evening everyone Could I ask you to uh, take your places either at the table or round the bar and uh, focus on our distinguished guests at the front because we shall begin in a moment According to our fine tradition let me just summarize briefly some of the events coming up at the club. We have a very busy and eventful uh, and diverse time. So tomorrow morning, Wednesday at 9.30, we have the launch here of a report on strengthening migrant youth leadership through personal well-being and community compassion. It's organized by the NGO Help Without Frontiers. Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, we have a panel discussion on Thailand's controversial immigration laws on their consequences and we will discuss among other matters the TM30 form that has caused a great deal of anxiety and concern in Thailand in recent months. The following day Friday we have the launch of a photography exhibit called Tooth and Nail by uh, one of our own here, the photographer Amanda Mustard. And then next Monday as part of our continuing series of uh, film events, we have a documentary at 7 o'clock called Bobby Jean and as with all these events that will be shown here. So do come to those. As I said we have a, an extremely busy and active program at the moment. Right, now on the 24th of March this year Thailand held its first elections to the House of Representatives since 2011. In May, two months later, we saw the ceremonial opening of Parliament. In July, a new cabinet was sworn in. Now, in that cabinet, there were many familiar faces, but the cabinet, the government here, is formally accountable to the Parliament. And in the Parliament, there are many new forces and faces that have uh, emerged, reflecting partly the views of millions of younger Thai voters who had the opportunity to vote for the first time. And we this evening are delighted to welcome three first-time members of that new parliament, uh, each representing a different political party. Uh, and we look forward to sharing their views with us on, among other matters, why talented young people would choose a career in politics today rather than uh, another walk of life, what first impressions they have of the new parliament and how it works and of the government accountable to it, and what hopes and fears do they have for parliamentary work uh, in the coming years. So let me introduce first Kun Tanakan Pon Pong Sarot. She's a successful businesswoman uh, running the uh, family plastics polymer company, a family business. She was persuaded to contest the seat uh, which she won for the Palang Pracharat party in Dusit Bang Sur. Uh, we have Tapi Pop Limit Rakon, uh, a gorilla, gorilla beer brewer uh, who's been in the news, uh, you may be aware, because of his beer brewing activities. A founder member of Future Ford campaign, campaigned in Bangkok's Klong San district and against the odds beat a Democrat veteran uh, politician. And we also are delighted to welcome Kun Sarat Saran Anaporn, uh, who comes from a, an experienced political family in Kon Ken. She also formerly worked as an assistant for the former Purtai leader Kun Sudarat uh, before choosing to run in the election herself. She has studied in Korea and uh, so she's planned to be to go into education before choosing a political career instead. You're all very welcome here. We're delighted to see these uh, young, first-time, fresh faces in politics to share their views. And I'll ask Kuntanikan to open, please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. As um, Nigel said, um, the new face in politics, and I don't have any background on politics before, not my family and not 
any of my business because I do the family business before. I'm a CEO background and I have a background on management skill. And I also work at advertising agency because I graduated from Chulalongkorn University Communication Arts and then I have master degree in economics. So um, as Nigel said, I don't have any political background, but the point that um, I join, can I also go on just 10 minutes right now or in separate, right? No, please, please. Okay, okay. It's not going to be serious, right? But you guys look so serious, <laughs> so it annoy me. <laughs> okay, okay, and yeah, and then actually could be Putipong Punakan. Right now, he's a minister of DE. Yeah, he asked me many times to join the politics in Thailand because we will have the election. Like, he asked me, he asked me on, I don't know, last September. And then I just come up with, I asked myself if I want to create something for my country because I already success in my business or my family is okay. <coughs> then any room for me to create something and contribute something to the society. And I want to be the part of um, women issue, the women policy. I want to do something like um, women homeland security in Thailand. So I decided to join. And it's very challenge for me because I don't have any political background and and then I think, but also is very, you know, it improved my learning curve a lot because it's very challenge. Everything, you know, everything for me is just like it's an unknown game. I don't know whether tomorrow is gonna be, and I never know that what's gonna happen next. Then I need to prepare myself, just like every minute, and I read a lot and I do a homework a lot and but I think the most important thing is um, you need to have your intention the strong intention will drive you to the point and this is the first time that I think we have the new faces like us in the Thai um, politics so I think it's the good opportunity for the new generation to, to work with the old one the experience one and we merge together as you see that we have many new generation and also many women join the government right now oh i sorry the parliament so i think there's something changed in our society something changed in thailand is called the opportunity and also the mindset of the new generation i don't want to sit down on my sofa and criticize our own country. I just want to step in and do have some teamwork on my own team and then we fight for it. And whether, I don't know if it will success or not, but I just did the action, that's all. Would you like to continue and share some of your uh, initial views and impressions of the new parliament? Or we can come back to that later if we prefer. Or later. Later. Let okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. From Tower Pop. Yeah. I always have problem with the, oh, the microphone, you know, because I'm um, 194 meter high, so I always like oh, it's, it's too short for me. So good, uh, uh, good everything, everyone. Uh, my name is Tao. You can call me uh, just Tao, okay? That probably like uh, really close to everyone. So uh, everyone know me as a uh, the convicted uh, brewer, <laughs> right? <laughs> like on the headline, uh, maybe like two years ago, and oh, this guy happened to uh, win, the, uh, have won the election. But I will introduce myself furthermore. Um, I graduated from Thammasat Law School, so I, uh, you know, at that time I'm not a good kid. You know, I'm not a great A student, so I'm probably spend ninety percent of my time in the rural uh, volunteer camp. So at that time, I learned a lot about uh, this society because I was born in the uh, your middle 
family, like my, my dad there, uh, he uh, used to work for the PEA, so for the government, so I'm not really get any hard time in my life, you know, but when I go out and see the world, see uh, how uh, my fellow Thai people live, I feel like uh, we can do better, and I start to do a lot of activity and learn about the society, and I hope that, you know, we in the Thamasa use University in the top elite university will make change, and I mean that change support to be for for all to for in everyone, right? And then uh, after I graduate, I'm become uh, I became a lawyer for a big paper company, you know that that you know who they are, and uh, you know I'm start to be a, a land a property lawyer, and I uh, taking people lands, you know like poor people land. You know, okay, there one one at the time that I uh, decided I will quit my law career because uh, in the court, in the courtroom, um, uh, an old man came to the court without any shoe, you know, like barefoot, because if you uh, in the in the court you need to wear like polite uh, clothes, but he is just too poor, and uh, I'm happened to be the lawyer in that case, and I about taking um, his land. So uh, the judge told him to take an oath, like just reading, you know, like reading an oath that he will say the truth and things like that. And he said to me that, uh, judge, I cannot read. So I feel like, how, how can you sign this contract that you saw uh, this seven days, you know? So I feel like those people lack of representative and, you know, like I, I don't want to do this anymore, even if got a good pay. And then I just say, like, okay, um, I'm gonna sail out to the sea and you know, I become, so I become a tour guide because I, uh, you know, the, 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 the tourists uh, uh, better than better than my client, right? Because they, they come and gone by the day tour, not like any uh, lawsuit that you know, happen like a year. So I just take uh, some small spare that I feel comfortable and then I meet a lot of people from around the world and I exchange my thought on them and yeah, I can see like this, can, this country and I strongly believe that this country can be better. You know, like why we not do this? Why uh, in Scandinavia people do like that? In Denmark people do like that? In um, America their uh, economy uh, system more like competitive than here, you know. But then I cannot like quit my uh, love of beer, you know. So I just drink. I mean, like I, I, I started to drink beer when I was uh, 15 years old. <laughs> Confess to my dad. <laughs> he he actually made me love beer. You know, he like uh, the the one who uh, told me about all oh, the German because he graduated from Germany. So he always like talk about like German beer and different brewery like in the village. So. Um, yeah, I love drinking since the uh, beginning, and my, my, my mom always like, oh, don't drink too much. And I said, like, one day I will make living out of it. I will prove that I drink for good. <laughs> so one day, like, uh, when I become a tour guide, I started to uh, learning how to brew beer from Google, from YouTube, and I have sell thoughts myself, and then I start to work at Mikeller Bar at my uh, you know, like I think like three years ago, and I worked for one year there. You know, like I worked in the bar, like those guys in the bar, you know, those bartender, those beer tender. I wipe out the floor, clean the toilet uh, for like fifteen thousand baht. And I, uh, after my uh, my 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 clock out, maybe um, one a.m. in the morning, I go home sleep, and I woke up seven a.m. and I go to work as a tour guide until like. 5 p.m. and then I start to be attended like this. And on my um, day off, Saturday and you know, like two days a week, I brew beer. So that really hard is is the most hardest time in my life. And then uh, I think like, oh, why I'm just so hardworking? Because um, you can see me, I'm look like Chinese people, right? I'm half Chinese, so I always been taught like, uh, you need to work hard and you you will successful. And then like. Why I work so hard and I'm not really successful yet? What happening? You know, something wrong with this country, you know? And then I, okay, I save all the money from the tour guy and I 
quit the bar and then I need to make it up for myself. I need to own a business by myself. I work just too hard for another people. <laughs> and then I brew beer for one and a half year. And then, um, yeah, now you catch up on the story with the news. And I think the rest is a story that you know that I got a rest because I'm brewing beer. And uh, because I cannot match the minimum of the brewing beer to start a brew pub in here, the XI, uh, the, the Ministry of Treasure, have the law, the loyal decree that you need to brew 100 liter, uh, 100,000 liter a year to attend the brew pub so you can sell on the permit. But if you want to bottle and sell beer everywhere, you need to brew uh, 10 million liter a year. So uh, it's about like 30,000 liter a day, or probably like 60,000 pints of beer a day. So even I can make it, I cannot sell it, because by then, uh, if you make the beer and you have no good branding, you cannot advertise your beer. Uh, you could jail for that, you know. So it's about the log of, of the log, many log about this, so I think uh, I feel that time like I need to change that, you know. And the reason why I become a politician and found a future forward party, I'm the co-founder because I, uh, I speak to Mr. Uh, Mr. Tanaton and like, yeah, you want to brew beer at all? Yeah, I, I want to do beer. You want to do politics? Uh, maybe not, but yeah, I know. I, I want to join you because I know that the only way I can brew beer in this country, I need to go and change the law. That's why I'm running for uh, the parliament. <laughs> yeah. So from brewing beer to fermenting change. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> Please, Consort Saran. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Is it, is it, is it loud? Um, let me uh, introduce myself for a bit. Um, my name is Sarat Sanan Anopon, and you can call me Fang. I am from Perth Thai Party, member of parliament from Khon Ken. See, both of these uh, MPs, they're from, they're city people, right? I'm from the countryside. Um, I grew up in the family of politician, unlike uh, these two, and I've been familiar with politics since day one. And, um, for what happened, and what happened was that I was born in the family of five siblings. I was the second one, and politics was not one of my first option. It never came to me by um, any chance or opportunity at all. So I pursue my career as um, I want to be a teacher, actually. So, I after graduating from uh, for tourism management, I got a scholarship to go to Korea because I want to learn the third language. So I chose Korea because um, I can speak English. So going to the UK or going to the States was not an option at all. It was either like uh, Japan or Korea. So I picked the scholarship in Korea. And after graduating from international studies, I came back and got a job offer uh, as a assistant to the Korean ambassador. So I've been in the diplomacy field for quite a few years. That's how I started to realize that I really want to uh, be in a profession that is not related to politics. And after working in the diplomacy area, I wanted, decided to uh, take a PhD course. And I've met a lot of good friends who join us here today. And that's when I decided that I think I want to be a teacher. I, I've met a lot of people. And like every other kid from our generation, the past five years, we, we are hopeless with politics, right? Including myself, you know, we, 
it, for our family, we talk about politics all the time and how hopeless it is, and also for our country. So I put myself so distant with uh, politics my whole life. So I pursue PhD and still uh, uh, studying, uh, going to graduate soon. And so I think becoming a teacher or a professor would be uh, a job that could help the country in some ways without having to go into politics. You know, because I learned from my dad and my mom that being a good MP does not change the country entirely because it's not only one person, right? You can be a good MP, you can represent your, your people, but at the end of the day, when politics become one of the, the issues that you cannot control. And so teacher was one of my profession that I pursue. And while, while studying, I went back to my hometown, uh, which is Khon Ken, the province in Isan, or northeastern area, where uh, the GDP is one of the lowest. Most of the people there, they make income for meal. So their main concern is how to put food on the table how to pay off their loan every month, how to pay the mortgage. That was everyday struggle. And while studying PhD, I also run my own business and I got to learn how really the struggles, people, the grassroots people, how they really are suffering from everyday life it's not even about politics, it's about our country. And you know how you become hopeless and you just don't care? You know, you wait for somebody to do something, right? Me, I was one of them. I was like, can anybody do something about this? You know, military will not do anything about it. They just talk about peace. They don't even talk about how to put food on people's table. That's the past five years that I uh, witnessed, at least for my employee. I do all the help. I offer help to all my employees as much as one of the employees can do, but it's not, it's not enough. And I start asking myself, and at the same time, my mom or my dad, they are very much uh, really want to, to move on. They don't want to talk about politics anymore. But who's going to be the next, you know, the next uh, representative of, of the district? I will not say that uh, it's all because of me that I got elected. You know, uh, being in Isan, we got this... Uh, this advantages, right? How Pua Thai party is, is uh, preferable to the people. So, that, so I, the reason that I decided to join politics was I stopped waiting for people to do something. And it's very hopeless to, to wait for anybody to do anything at all. So I, I, I start asking myself again, like, what can I do other than just being a business owner? What else can I do in my whole life, 30 years, what can I do better? And having to witness uh, being a politician, you can actually make change. You can, even for a little bit, you know, people in my district, they don't ask for much. They ask for water, water system. They ask for street light. That's how hard it is. We don't even talk about uh, democracy anymore. They just want somebody to voice their struggles. And I think, back then, I think I, I can at least uh, do something to, uh, to voice their, their struggles and 
that's why I decided to to be one of the candidates. And Pua Thai Party, they give a lot of opportunities to new candidates because uh, we see that the world is not the same anymore, and things are changing. And uh, we we think that the new generation can actually bring the new creative, uh, like myself, at least I, I might uh, be able to bring something new and fresh to the table. And really hopeful that the country will be able to see something different. And in this parliament, out of 500 uh, MPs, do you realize that there are uh, 250 new, new MPs? We are expecting to see something different this time. And for my part, uh, representing Pua Thai Party, representing grassroots people, at least I want to do my part voicing what they have or what they need. You know, and uh, other than that, we'll see what this elected government has to offer because we are here as an opposition and we will do all the part that we can to help the government to perform uh, what they supposed to perform. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's all, all fascinating from all of you. Thank you. Uh, something new and fresh is a very striking expression. So three different parties, three different backgrounds, three different paths into politics. So could I ask you now just to sort of reflect on these first weeks of life and work in the new parliament? What are your first impressions? What are the things that have particularly struck you and surprised you about what you've seen and done, what you've seen others do so far? What surprised us? What surprised us? Um, maybe uh, the conversation about the personal issue, not the sake of the benefit to all, I think. It should not be in the parliament, but they are discussing about the personal issue more than the benefit that should raise this issue for the benefit of all. I think um, we should go in more creative way, but maybe it's just some, this, only this part that disappointed just a bit, but the less I think it's okay. I don't know. Because I'm the government. <laughs> Them. Well, that's also another difference between you, of course. One of you represents the, the major party in the governing coalition, yeah. and the other, the other two of you represent the opposition parties. When you say personal, what, rather than national or when the collective benefit or interest, what, what, what do you mean exactly? I mean, I mean um, you know, when, when you see on the people, you know, when they blame each other in order to, to fight for when you perform because you know that the media is watching you, the, the, all the Thai people is watching you, and then I think you should be more careful that the word that opened from your mouth should be more creative and more, you know, for, for the better for, of the living or for, for other, not for themselves. I just mean that this way. Yeah. Kun Tao, Kun Fang, any just first impressions? You're, you're all new to Parliament. What, what struck you most about how things work there? Um, for me, um, the first, the way for, I mean, now is we, we, we just got like um, second, second month pay, right? <laughs> yeah, we just got the second month pay. So uh, by the time that I work, or I, I will tell about the first week, so the first impression about the parliament or what, what I thought before, right? So what I thought before the parliament would probably be um, 
very uh, old press and very uh, kind of tradition and very uh, serious. Mm -hmm. And you know, the opposition party uh, will hate each other. I uh, that that why I thought before I uh, stepping in. So the the reality is, you know, some of it is 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 right. Some of it is not really like that. That is what I thought. So the good thing about it, you know, like when you see people or the, in the news that we kind of like, uh, really disagree on each other, you know, that our job, right? I mean, the parliament is the place where people come and, and speak. So we represent each of the political uh, uh, core, you know. So um, uh, we are social democratic, uh, uh, we are left, we are right, whatever, whoever there. You know, we are the solution of the society that we're not gonna solve the conflict on, on the street. So we're standing for interest of the people. So I think it's good that when uh, we, we, we speak to the parliament, uh, okay, we speak and we work, we perform our duty as well uh, as we promised to the people. So I think that uh, the good thing about it, but, but then, you know, after that, when we go and eat, we can sit together, we can say hi. We, I, I also, why everyone, you know, like, no matter, um, uh, I, I don't, uh, I disagree with his opinion, but I mean, like, we are colleagues, we are work together. Some of, some of the day, I need to beg for their word in some of the law, right? You, that, you need to think like that because I believe none person in the world that totally 100 disagree with you. Politics for me is about taking what uh, you agree. You know, you kind of pursue people. You not attack people. Uh, you know, you oh, you disagree with me, and oh, you are bad. You are blah blah blah. You are stupid. But I think it's about talking and make the people who hate you be on your side. I think that the uh, who will call a, a talented politician. You know, we never win the heart of people by hatred. We win it with love. So I think. Uh, in the parliament, we can see that you know many of the uh, veteran uh, parliamentarian they are uh, know each other for so long, right? And they, they are friends, and but now they are different party. Each of them like work or uh, you know, probably their idea will change. Their idea will change. Like I don't know, but yeah, I, I try to be strong and really uh, commit to what I speak to people in my constituent and be myself as long. Uh, I mean, forever or as long as I could, yeah. So, and uh, the 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 thing that I think uh, really surprised me is how conservative the press is, really conservative, like super conservative. The the root of Thai society conservative is there. When uh, I go there, even like fifty five years old um, civil servant or officer will call me Tan. Tan is me like a uh, sir or uh, your honorable uh, person, you know, like, so I, I always like, I, I, I don't really like this, you know, I always tell them like, oh, don't call me Tan, don't call me, and when we eat, the waitress will serve the food to the, some of the MP, and I say, uh, don't do that because I don't have money to tip you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the main reason, that's the real one, you know, I'm the most honest. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, 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 I can go and queue up for the food, right? And uh, uh, also, like, I think I, we, I remember we, uh, we greeting when uh, we queue up for the food, yes. and yeah, I think that's first time. So, I know, like, the, I agree with Kun Hanakan that uh, the, the, the parliament is changing by the young people, and we're not, uh, not really the uh, formal, uh, formality group of people we, we like to we can do things by ourselves we uh, don't like many things that uh, we we think is I, I don't think it's wrong but I, I don't just don't like it you know this is my opinion I don't want anyone to treat me better than another I mean everyone should have like equally uh, uh, respect from each other I'm you know I don't know like I try to do everything by myself you know like as much as I could, 
but the good thing is uh, it's a it's a new world and I love the social media because it make people outside or even young people uh, know what happening in uh, in uh, uh, their government, what they're doing, what their representative doing. And you know, like I think we should learn that it's not like ten a decades ago that if you talk bad, it's just gone because it's live TV. But now it's completely run forever, and uh, that will be your stigma. And uh, uh, let's prove it next time that you will get elected or not. You know, like it's probably change the politics forever. And maybe uh, I hope that uh, our parliament we we need to help each other, especially young generation of politician to to set a new standard of the Thai parliament. And you know, the only thing that will help the country and our politics, we need to bring back people uh, people believe. Of the politician and the parliamentary system, when they feel that they are hopeless, they will go on the street, and and then you know what is next to happen, right? So I think like we should do our a, a job great, and I, I try my best. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so young young people, younger generation in a very conservative environment, it can feel like that. That's yes, interesting. of course. I it's I um. I, I think like it's like uh, Nigel, like you go to uh, baptize in the shirt like every day or something. I, I probably feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Kung Fang, what, what are your main impressions and reflections on the, this new parliament? Politicians are wild. The wild. first, <laughs> the first meeting, there were, there were screams. There were a lot of clapping. There were a lot of a lot of people really want to speak because it, because we didn't have parliament for more than seven years. Um, I think six six years, um, three years uh, for Ying Lap uh, administration, and then five years. So around uh, it was a long time for MP to uh, to be able to speak to the country, and they went wild for me entering the parliament meeting for the first time, it was quite interesting. I was the observer. You know, the first time MP going to the, the meeting, you're not expecting to be speaking. And also from Pua Thai Party, the biggest uh, party with a lot of members, a lot of the seniors are expecting to be speaking and not for the newcomer. But surprisingly, at High Party, they really wanna to represent something new. So they give us newcomers to be able to hold the microphone. And actually, it, it's a good opportunity, but then it comes with you know pressure, having to speak in in the assembly. And actually, a lot of us really wanna you know come up. Because we also have people, our people, waiting for their representative to be talking. And I was one of them. I decided to start with, uh, with discussion before the opening of the, the, the actual meeting. And, you know, having to go talk to my people every week, they, we, I have a long list of what they want me to speak in, in the house. And so I started with a drought problem and how there's no rain and how their rice farming is dying. And that was the first time I spoke no water, no rain. And that uh, one of the problem was that there is a prison in my district and the prison released the water, the, the, the sanitary water to people's uh, farm area and ever since, I think it was about 20 years ago that they got affected by this problem. And I was the first MP to talk about their struggle. First time in 20 years. And right after I talked about this to the uh, spokesman of, of the house, the next day, somebody, the authority sent somebody to the prison and really see what is going on. 
And I was kind of surprised. Wow, that's the power of becoming an MP. You see, like, you talk to the, to the house for less than, than three minutes, but you can actually uh, demand something. So now I see that I have a tool, so I have a mic. The mic is my tool. So the more that I get to speak, the more I can demand from the authority. So I was kind of impressed how MP as a role of, uh, as a representative can make uh, at least some changes or progress to the problem. And following a lot of the meetings, when we had this prime minister uh, voting, I, another surprise that I had was the Senate voted for one person and one person only. How can 250 people have the same, same um, thoughts and agreement? That, what, that was really surprising. I was expecting some uh, two or three uh, no votes, you know? But this really reflects how um, elected, no, they're not even elected. Um, <laughs> see how this is going? Um, I think that this election, it's a good start that we have democ at least some democracy in the country again. But still, we are uh, using election as a tool to, to something else for sp specific group of per people which uh, I think that reflects the, the overall problem of the country that human rights or people's voice are not 100% uh, reflecting in, in this work of the government. Yeah, yeah. So three, three distinct impressions there that, that, that some of the comments that uh, all activities in parliament are too personal, very conservative, but wild as well. So a sort of fascinating mix of impressions. So you give us a nice sound bite there, Kun Fang. The, the mic is my tool. That's a very intriguing expression. Um, please feel free, anyone who has questions um, wants to explore any of these themes with uh, our guest this evening to uh, make their way to our mic. Uh, and while they're doing that, may I just ask one more question? So, Kun Fang, you made reference to the, the, uh, the voting for the Prime Minister, and we have a, a, a government now uh, 19 party coalition with a very small majority overall. Now, it would be very interesting at this stage to have your reflections on how durable that coalition is likely to be. Will that government with its small majority and many different parts, is it likely to stay in power, retain its majority, push through its laws, push through its budgets, uh, or what, what might happen to that? Anyone? Ah, uh, let the me first. Like, uh, my beer, gone. <laughs> One beer, please. I, I just not, not only ordering beer, but yeah, I think the um, how to say it's very really, very really strange like, that you have like uh, so many party and so few the uh, different word, but. So I think it is uh, by the say by the by the anyone thinking is probably not really uh, last long, but in my opinion, yeah, okay, it would be tough for for the government coalition, but I think it's gonna last long because uh, you know, like if the the problem not about the MP, I I respect all the member of parliament because I know how hard to get elected, you know, and <laughs> I, I think no one really want to uh, have new election in a, a few months, you know, it's really a tough job and it's no kind of thing, it's really good way to elect someone to represent because like nobody have 100% of anything on the, uh, on the election. But, uh, but the fact that we have 250 uh, senator that really an issue because even like you have uh, 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 Mr. Prime, Mr. Prime Minister vote out in the uh, in the in the in the motion of no confidence 
you know, like he will got uh, re-elected again by the Senate, right? Because right, they also have the majority from the, uh, you know, even even the some of the minority party who who join who now join the government gone, but yeah, for five years the Senate can vote for the uh, prime minister, so I think it's gonna last long, right? But it will get getting ugly. So 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 fast, yeah. Oh, that that the power of MP, right? <laughs> because you have the minds and the tools. <laughs> my mind is my tool. Cheers, guy. <laughs> yeah. You you don't have to, but uh, any any comments you had would be very welcome on the subject. Yeah, I I agree with Kun Tao people that. Uh, we didn't know. We didn't know that um, whether it's gonna be last long and how long will this government gonna be. But I hope that it's gonna be last long because, as Kunta people said, I don't want to start it all over again. You know, it's hard to you know we go backward and then we elected again. You know, instead of um, just do what you want, uh, do as you can now, step by step. And just go forward. You know, I think it's better than you know come back again and start it all over again and again. And you know, yeah, I think. And I hope, I hope that it's gonna be um, not that short. I completely agree with this too. Um, and also, all the bills that will need to be passed. The upcoming one is the budget bill, and we will see. Um, the struggle that the government will have. Uh, recently, the, the, the small parties, the 10 micro party, if, if you know what I mean, the micro, the, the <laughs> nano party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how, how big of the scale. Well, maybe nano. Okay. Um, see, the, the problem is that they know that the, from both sides, votings are very similar and all the power all the the pivot point that will change everything entirely is depending on these 10 people eventually they will join the government but um, every time that the bill has to be passed it's the work that the government has to 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 make them happy and do whatever they have to, to make all the bills that need to be passed. And it's really funny how big parties has no power, not even to Palang Pachalak, right? Yeah. We have, um, they have to rely on a lot of people. I also believe that eventually they will do anything to make everything possible, no matter how. And it's kind of uh, frustrating for the coalition's other party to, to work in that kind of environment, especially for the government, mm. right? And having prime minister uh, taking over like the economics, uh, like ministries, and beneath him, there's a lot of uh, ministers from various parties, and that will reflect a lot of conflicts in the future as well because every party has a uh, different kind of policy that they have uh, advertised before during their campaign there will be it will get ugly like he said and we can see how the prime minister is trying to control the uh, economic ministries how he tries to control the defense ministry how he control the police department and how he has the control over DSI. Are we, are we calling ourselves a democracy country? I, I don't know. Maybe in, in the paper by the constitution, but in reality we, we, ha we have to recheck again of what is really going on. But to your question, yes, they will pass all the bills that they can, but it will be, uh, there will be a lot of dramas. 
<laughs> it, it, it's a fascinating dynamic you describe, a very classic situation with a, a, if a large coalition has a small majority, then small parties have big power. Mm. They can extract the price needed yeah. to get their vote every time. We've seen this in other parts of the world as well. All right, uh, we have some questions. Uh, as usual, could you please just briefly introduce yourself uh, before you pose your question? Thank you. Hello, my name is Dominic Pawaswa Jagapong from the Environmental Justice Foundation. Um, and my question is regarding climate change. I was quite disappointed that not many of the parties touched on the environment or climate change as an election issue. And Kunfar, you, you mentioned that in Korad your, yourself, you've experienced droughts. Thailand is in the midst of one of its worst droughts in, in generations. So my question is, um, what are the parties going to do about this? And you also said that uh, the mic is your weapon in the House of Representatives. So will you call for a climate emergency in Thailand? Thank you. Oh, a tool. Yeah, just a correction there. Not a weapon, because that's... We don't have weapon. Um, regarding the, your comments, um, actually climate change is, is an issue that we need to raise awareness, not to just um, political scene, but to everybody in the country. And um, for drought, aside from climate change, we have really bad water management. It's either drought or flood. For in our power that we can take action now is that um, at least water management for agricultural sector should be more efficient, should be more effective than this. And um, actually, Pua Thai Party, we have this new pillar of, uh, uh, we call it Pua Thai Plus, and we're trying to touch upon issues that uh, not many parties are trying to raise awareness or uh, touch upon. We do um, ecotourism. That's what we are trying to do. We uh, do anything in our power to, to make sure that uh, we catch upon what, what the country is supposed to be focusing on. And also climate change is one of them, really. But like I said, we can initiate we want to initiate um, the lifestyle of Thai people. Because if you can uh, observe Thai society, we choose convenience, right? We use plastic bags, we use foam, we use everything. And Pua Thai Plus, we have this project to, to uh, eliminate all that. But if you're talking about like policies, um, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, uh, if you're talking about parties, we focus more on what is uh, the number one priority. And Pua Thai Party, we mainly focus on the living of the people. I really wish that Thailand can, you know, focus on climate change more. And that's what we are, uh, we as a Pua Thai Plus, I'm, I'm also the spokesperson. And I can say that it's one of our main concern. But in the parliament, if you're talking about climate change, me as a representative from Khon Ken, they'll be like, what are you talking about? You see, you see the, the, we are just, if you're talking the Maslow hierarchy, we are still in the first base. And climate change is like one of the top uh, there in the pyramid. But I understand your concern. The Thai Party has, has, uh, has a vision to really bring something new to, to the country and a lot of things that we can propose. I can say that um, at least we really want to try. But the main priority for, for the Thai people right now is economy. But we are not saying that we won't go green. We will. But for now, what we can do is to really raise awareness and every small little things like plastic bags or foam, we can you know, make it better, make it happen. Yes, Either of you care to comment on, on the issue of climate change yeah. in a 
declaring in, a climate um, emergency in Thailand? Yeah, in, in my party, we also have the policy about the climate change. We have um, short-term plan and long-term plan. Short-term plan is the same as um, Kun Kaofang said. We need to raise awareness of all the people. Actually, this issue is not only in Thailand. It's a global issue, right? So, yeah, and the people need to know that you not depend on only the government policy. You need to help the country, maybe reduce the use or recycle, something like that. And also for the long-term plan, we are also working on, um, you know, the clean energy and also the EV car or something like that. And also we also have some priority as well, economic issue and the better living of the Thai people. Yeah, so something like this. And But um, your issue is also represent of the quality of life of the Thai people as well. So don't worry, I think um, every party have this issue on their policy. Yeah, so um, for the future for a party or myself, you probably see me um, riding the bike on my campaign. Uh, obviously, I would would tell the truth to you. I'm not a um, like go green guy, you know, but I'm just too poor to afford uh, my campaign car, you know. So I just need to ride my bicycle because it's go everywhere and it's free. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, but it's a point, right? If you want to climate change to be better, you need to start to that. If you do this to make the planet better, yourself get better too. You know, like economy and climate change can go with each other. So for the future forward, we think like this. If uh, the problem with the trash, so why don't uh, you tell people to recycling the, the, the trash, but then like, uh, why, why get from it? Nobody cooperate with you, right? If you make people get money from it, probably they would. Or even you can do another way, if make them pay for it, yeah, they will, right? So I think it's, you can combine the economy and, and the environmental uh, together too. So yeah, you know, I don't use the bike because it's cool or it's safe, the planet, but I mean like, that only option I have, you know, so, and it's more convenient because I go everywhere, I park everywhere, you know, if saving planet and make it convenient at the same time, yeah, probably we can share it. And I mean, I agree with Kao Fang, I, 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 I think, we, I, I, I thinking, or I used to think uh, in between this to uh, uh, to a uh, segment of the time that, yeah, why we care about the climate change because I mean like people really struggle here and I mean it's the first world uh, issue, I mean it's world issue, but then I think like everyone need to cooperate together because it's not about the problem with Thailand, it's drop here because Thai people do it or it's, it's too hot in Europe because like the Chinese people there put the CO2 on the atmosphere is a global issue and I think like to solve the problem with the climate change we need to have a firm a foreign affair ministry to you know it's not about the water from the Mekong River in Thailand that right is because the Chinese uh, tree gorge dam that they not really send to Thailand it's a global issue that's why they call it global issue it's not about the Thai government can like take full responsibility about that because we don't have money anymore we, because we just bought some submarine you know like don't 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 take anything from us we run out of man of fun budget now right so i think we can do better i think the government and you know especially young people we concerned about it because uh, if if I or my party not concerned, we 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 not supposed to use the name future forward because we don't gonna have any future soon, right? Okay. Um, Michael Mackey, freelance. And this question refers to my previous life because before I was a journalist, I used to work for a Labour member 
of the British House of Commons. Um, so a bit to the left, well I was, she wasn't, I was a bit to the left of where our representative from Future Forward is. But it's just a, a question about how you work as MPs. For example, I'd like to know, do you run surgeries in your constituencies? How do your constituents contact you? And do you see yourself as representatives of that constituency? Because our friend from Conken seemed to view herself more as a delegate, which is that they you restrict the freedom of movement, uh, not freedom of movement, but the freedom to vote as you want in a parliament if you're a delegate, as opposed to a representative. So if you could just give, answer some of those questions, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Well, I like Labour Party, by the way. I always, uh, I watch the, uh, the House of Commons and uh, you know, those like Burke Crow, right? Like I want to be a labor pro. I want to be a house speaker one day, right? That, yeah, probably, probably. I I always say that, and I get what I wish, you know. So, uh, do I really do I feel like I represent my constituent? Of of course, right? Because I most of the people I meet, I, uh, you know, like Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, probably I in the meeting and in the room like this, but. Uh, later, uh, those day I always in my um, in my constituent and in my area, but if say like that, I don't really represent any idea of my uh, constituent. But I also I feel like I'm represent every every Thailand citizen or even expat or even like majority people in the country too. I don't really care that uh, I when I go in my constituent, I will feel all the old school politics atmosphere. Every corner I walk through, I will see like this street uh, funded or you know like uh, making from the money that some of the representative you know take the money from the parliament or something like that. Or I feel uh, I see the fire exit grid with the or uh, representative sticker or even the older one. You know, like, like that, you know, they, they try to like, oh, I'll do this for you, but but then if you walk to uh, uh, the, the street or the so on that, uh, you know, they are Thai people, you know, you will feel, you will see like uh, the Democrat side is well paved with load, well sewer arrangement, and then the Pure Thai uh, community sub who, who poorer and support Pure Thai will you know, have nothing. Because like, people do, uh, the old politician take side. Oh, this is my people. I always give the money to them. So I go and uh, people will come. Oh, I vote for you. I don't care who you vote for me or not. You know, in one in, in, instant, uh, in one, uh, you know, even that I met the people in the, it's called 200 um, building, community, Song Roy Hong, you know, uh, in the Kung Thon Buri Soi Tree. And uh, they have the problem with the uh, condominium building because uh, along the the the, the uh, sky train way, and they go there in the community and they complain about the flood and uh, not uh, enough the infrastructure and it's happened to be one house who uh, support uh, general Payut. like oh your party is suck your uh, Tanaton is a bad guy he a uh, communist uh, sorry communist uh, Soviet Union has fallen like. 30 years ago, you know, like, I don't know, like, if you know it or not, you know, so I tell that, and I ask, I, I just, I don't care who you support or you hate my party, but I ask, do you, do you feel, do you, your, your, your health fat or not, or in, in the night, did you, did you wake up by the, by the sound of construction, do you breathe the same air as your neighbor that complained to me that the construction, uh, make a lot of PM 2.5? Yes, yes, okay. I don't care about your political will, I will represent you and solve your problem. You know, when you do your job, it's your job that you represent everyone. But if you're campaigning, you have to win it. 
I think that that the thing that I learned and I I would say I represent everyone. I don't care about oh, you know I I, I speak like this because I'm very really so social media savvy pe uh, person MP. So I always have like you know Chiang Mai or whoever in the country contract me because what I want to do because I I just a normal people where I just normal people no one really listen to my voice. I want to brew beer. Nobody really care about me. So I just a new MP who want to do politics for everyone. I want people voice heard. You know. So I always open to everyone. I always keep my cell phone number. And people ask, oh, is it really your cell phone number? Yeah, of course, but nobody call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Be first, I, I think that, oh, so many people call all the time. But yeah, nobody no. call. Yeah. Maybe I'm, yeah, I, I grab that I'm opposition party. If I'm the government one, they will call me a lot more. Right? <laughs> So you make yourself very accessible, that's, uh, and yeah, you represent yeah. everyone. Very good. And, and what about your relationships with your constituents? How, how do you manage those relationships? How do you hear yeah. what they need and Me? so on? Uh, no, uh, no, no, you're done, you're done. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, my turn. Um, I think uh, the main duty of being an MP, I, I think it should be two main duty. One is to be a representative of the people and another is to issue the law and make the policy so the part that representative being the representative I target uh, into two target group two main target first one is to represent for all the district all the people in my district I, I don't care whether they vote for me or not but now I'm the MP I can voice for them so if that got some needs that um, unmet need or something they can mm -hmm. tell me or my team mm -hmm. yeah and for another main target is the women you know because um, right now we have women more than men in Thailand mm -hmm. so I also represent the women as well yeah and another part is just it to the law and policy which related to the work of representative because you represent them you know what they need right and then it come up with the law with the policy that to help them in uh, you know in the big part yeah, yeah do you know where is the best place to discuss politics with with the local people at the funeral and that's where I connect with my people. Like I really get to talk to what is really going on in their lives. Like the drought problem that I, that I got to talk in the parliament, it was from the funeral. And every week I have to travel back and forth from Khon Kaen to Bangkok. Every week we have parliamentary meeting on the weekdays. And Friday to Monday, I'll be in Khon Kaen. And every weekend, I attend at least four to five funerals. And I found it is such a good opportunity that I really get to talk to the people. One village, uh, I mean, one funeral, not many people attend because it's, you know, their uh, relatives. And so we gather and they really want to approach me and say how their lives are and that's uh, that's that I found is a good place and opportunity that I get to communicate with my people for the work of uh, MP we don't just talk in the parliament we also work outside of the parliament and I think one of the 80% uh, of MP as an opposition side we focus in our constituency we still work hard, we still uh, listen, we listen more. I mean, when we are the government, we tend to listen less, right? So the main job for being in opposition MP, I really listen to them and voice in the parliament. And 80% of my work, I 
focused on my, my, my constituency and waiting for the next election that we can really uh, work on what we promised the, the people. And not that I, like um, these two MPs said, we are not just representing our people because uh, these days, social media, you know, on my page, not only people from my constituency only text me or uh, leave any kind of comments, but it's everybody that uh, follow me, who follow me, they, uh, even they're not my voter, even if they are not uh, Thai uh, voters, they still communicate with me. And I think that's a very uh, good opportunity for MPs like us and how technology has evolved the communication between politicians and, and citizens. Because um, back in the days, only people have to drive their car to MPs headquarters and tell what their problem is. But now, in, a, in, in an instant click, they can just say, like, what is going on? A lot of the information that I receive and a lot of the problem that I uh, got an idea of how anybody in particular village has a problem, I got it from my Facebook page. See, and many of the young generation, they really want to approach me, but only through Facebook because they will not attend funeral. Even during the camp, right? Even during the campaign, I went around 40, uh, 400 village. I, every time that I go out, make speech, there will only be uh, people who are older than 40 years old who attended. So that was a direct contact that I have with the citizens. But at the same time, new voters um, young generations like me, they like me, but they have never met me in person. And that is my next goal. I don't think of me as, you know, like a tan, like sir, like you mentioned. I don't, re I don't see myself as, like, you know, the, like somebody important. I come from them, so I speak for them. So I try to, at least for my constituency, I try to close the gap between politician. I think that's a, that's a good uh, start. And I think that's one of the problem of how people have perspective about politician. They're untouchable, right? But for me, 30 years old, they, at least young voters, they would like to approach me more they can relate to me more because the content that I posted on Facebook are more relatable to them. And also to the older generation, they see us as, uh, as hope. They see us and expect for us to bring something, bring some changes to their lives. It's, it's, it's a great pressure, but I think, I mean, we have a, a government now, right? Yeah. I can just take a mic and <laughs> you can <laughs> and and um I think it's it's a good opportunity being being an opposition side on my first term that I know how how democracy system really work, so I will use this opportunity to grab any kind of issue at all and say it to to the parliament, this is the power of be of of being an opposition side. I think one more thing that I want to add on that in our generation, we are keen of the technology, right? And so we can do on online and offline together that can cross the gap between um, the people and politician and also the older generation and the younger generation, we are in the middle in between. So um, knowing the technology and the world has changed, it helps a lot that cross all the gap. Yeah. And technology transforming politics, including yeah. the politics of representation yeah. around the world. Yeah. Your iPhone is your tool, not only your mic. Yeah. 
uh, fascinating. True. Okay, I think we have another question here. Nigel, um, I need to go because yes. I have uh, another meeting. Okay. So sorry because I have another meeting running right now. <laughs> Please I'll, let's, let's I'll all text thank you on iPhone. <laughs> okay. <warmly. laughs> or you can email me. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much for today. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you, Kuntana Khan. My name is uh, Patrick Desmond. I'm uh, an attorney for SCG Chemicals, and but I'm not here representing them. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I I've got a million questions, but in the interest of time, I'll cut that in half. Um, my my first question is for uh, MP uh, Saratsanun. You mentioned politicians are wild. So where are the parties, and can I be invited? Pardon. Where are the parties, and can I be invited? You said politicians are wild. <laughs> you mean party in terms of that kind of party? <laughs> yes, like a, like a party, like, like tonight with alcohol. <laughs> and uh, to our other MP, uh, can you use your power to get me a free beer? Just kidding, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, my question is that I look around the world and I look at countries that are, uh, have developing notions of democracy. And, and they're, they're, they're not a full democracy as you recognize, Saratsanun. And, and I think there's a lot of pent up uh, energy in the younger generation, ready to explode and ready to uh, replace the old stodged guard with um, uh, more things uh, to, to the extent of liberty. So how do you tap into that and how do you get it to explode? And then second, if there was one law you could add or uh, kill in Thailand, what would it be in the context of propelling Thailand forward to full democracy? Oh, tough. <laughs> Okay, um, lady first, but gentlemen before, right? <laughs> so about young people, right? I think like everywhere young people kind of like, uh, we we grew up in a. I, I mean, like we grew up in a different time. Young people always be a uh, different young people in a uh, each time of the uh, our history. So I think I presume that uh, Patrick, when you grow up, like all those uh, Michael Jackson. Enthusiasts is young people too. I mean, young people always evolving the world. Young people always change the world, right? I mean, like I'm 30 years old, I'm become an MP. If you talk to uh, those gentlemen on my right side, they're much younger than me. So I think they, I, I think they have different view of the world because they grew grew up in a different environment. But personally, for myself, I grew up in a in a world that I work so hard, but I just uh, so hard to break through. You know? I want to be. I want to have good life. I want to be uh, better. I think we I, we deserve better. And uh, you know the world shouldn't have only for a few, right? So in everywhere in the world, you can see like uh, in, uh, in in New York, AOC, right, uh, doing well in the, in the Congress, or even like recently you are. Uh, uh, yesterday on Twitter, you can see uh, Joshua Wong. He uh, mm -hmm. he uh, uh, made his triumph on like uh, shutting down the the H A airport. But I, I mean like he he should learn about like Thai airport shut down. <laughs> but then uh, I think everyone, you know, those young people is the people who not tolerate the suppression. Those young people who feel they can have a better life, you know, those young people, you know, one day, like in Thailand or Joe Chua Wong, they, he know that now the time has come. You know, before they don't know, it's about the adult, do it for them, you know, somebody do it for them, but now they think it's time and it's, it is their job to create their own future. And you know, we have the tool of social media that make people not a bigger 
voice, but we can consolidate the voices of many people in a very short period of the time. So I think that happened around the world in the same time because we have social media and tools. And what I want to kill, right? Or add? I, I, I would say, like, obviously, like, uh, many things uh, to, to change about Thailand. But uh, if one thing, like, I think, like, maybe probably, like, uh, you are kind of like a corny, uh, it, uh, Thailand, a uh, corny business economy. You know, those where all the, uh, all the big company like SCG and Phil, other company like, you know, and uh, they, they kind of like, uh, have, they are too rich and they can manipulate the government. And that's, that's how they dilute the, the voices of the people. I have one word, they have one word too, but you know, like, I don't have that much money like them to dilute the representative to be part of them. Just two months in the parliament, I see some incident that is really answer my, my, uh, my doubt in the our government, you know, like how MP work in the committee, who defending, uh, who they are de defending, who they work for, you know. You have to see in the, not in TV, right, because in the committee, they never show on TV. You will see, like, who represent, who, which group of people they, they call and ask, you know, it's very specific. And it's about some of the purpose, you know, to try to protect some of the people, you know, of course not small people. I answered your question, right? Thank you. I think we are, um, if you can see the movement from the younger generations, like he said, it's, actually going on around the world, like in Hong Kong or Arab Spring, or um, this young people, they cannot hold back on what they see as unequal. You see, like, the world, like, especially young generation who are now educated, they can see the difference of what the reality is and what the what uh, is, I mean, the reality, and what they wish the world that they live in supposed to be, and like he said, social media kind of connect us together, and I think it's a good, it's a good sign, because they actually care more about the society that they live in. They this generation. Kids, they live in this ideology, uh, like vision. Back then, for our parents, they live to make a living, right? They live for survival. But these days, people crave more, more than just food. They want liberty. We want uh, human rights, and. It's a good sign that young people are aware that the society needs more than just a leader. And, and if I can, if I want to change anything, mm, see the Thai politics, we are struggling with constitutional, uh, the, from, the, from the, the recently approved one. And ever since we endorse this bill, this constitution, we can see uh, that power is uh, separated, no, divided unequally. Those with power will maintain their power and it does not go to everybody. And if I wish to change, the reform of the Constitution would be the first priority. For example, like for the election that just, uh, that, that just finished, um, a lot of rules and regulations that, that they came up with reflect a lot of things that does not spell equal, right? We see nano parties 
where are they coming from? You know, bef um, during the campaign, like my, my people, they ask, how is this party listing calculated? And I have to tell them, I don't know. Because the election commission who has the power, they don't even know themselves. It's like they're waiting for somebody to tell them what's going on, you know, or what the, the person who has power decided to do. And they don't even want to promote election. They set the date a week or two before big holidays, like, like my constituency from Isan, right? A lot of people from my, 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 my district, they work in Bangkok. And every year they have to travel back to their hometown during the big holiday, Songkran, right? The, the Thai holiday. But the election was two weeks before that. If I were them, I would not come back. Back and forth within two weeks. They have to ask for day leaves. So I don't know um, what the government is trying to do, the NCPO, but the overall problem of Thai, Thai politics are the, constitu the Constitution. How Senate, who was um, selected by a handful of people, have the power to choose or vote for the prime minister that's that's um for me it's so it's such it's absurd they're not from the people i was so chosen from sixty thousand people to be able to get one uh, to cast one vote and who are they to be selected from somebody and choose them to be in power see I'm not anything against uh, the Senate. I mean, they're a good, qualified people, but I just dislike the process and how they proceed legally, you know. I mean, I talk to a lot of the Senate. They're a good, experienced, professionals, qualified people. But, I mean... The choice that they made, like I said, I was, I was surprised that there were not one single no vote for prime minister. And it's going to be the same the next time of uh, the election. Yes, please. Hi, uh, I'm Pok Pong Lawan Sri. I'm a member of the club. Um, I think uh, one of the reasons that Future Forward gets so many seats uh, from this election is that the people who run on behalf of Future Forward are ordinary people who represent um, you know, the commoners like that you would see on, on the street. And I think one of the last things um, the younger generation would want to see from Thai politics is that it would move away from uh, political family or political dynasty. Um, I think like uh, the representative from Future Forward and um, uh, Palang Pacharap represent like new generation of um, uh, member of parliament. Uh, and this question might be a bit provocative to the representative no, from Pakistan. I get time. that all the time. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I totally agree with everything you said. You know, it sounds really nice, but um, you represent a political dynasty which is very um, powerful and influential in Konkan province. Your father was, uh, an, MP, was an MP and, and a former minister. Your mother was also a former MP and so is your current uncle. And uh, when we are trying to move away from political dynasty, what would, be, you know, what, what would you be offering to Thai politics given that you are also representative of uh, Thai political family? Should I go first? You know what? I, I get that comment all the time and I don't see anything wrong about that. People have, you know, have the right to ask that. And one question I would like to ask back is that for me being the daughter and was raised in the political family, does that make me a bad MP from the first instant? 
right? I, was, I grew up knowing the people since day one of my life. I know them best. If you have to ask, what is a good MP? What is the purpose of having an MP? I mean, I think I am most qualified comparing to other candidates. We have 40, no, we, in my constituency, we have 43 candidates. Why do they have to choose a girl 30 years old? They don't even trust me at first. But I can say that they did not pick me just because I am from, I'm the daughter of this person. But I mean, I, for me as, as, as one person, I have my own quality. But you stamp on my forehead that you are the clan of this family and you got, uh, got elected just because you're the daughter of this person. No. I mean, I get the benefit out of it, but if you ask my quality, it's a different story. If you get to know me more, I am more than qualified than just being a daughter of somebody. And what, again, what is a good MP? Does somebody who speak very well in the parliament a good MP? For me, going to every village, talking to everybody, that does, does that still make me a daughter of somebody? Or does that make me a, an M, a good MP? I mean, I am me. My father, I mean, I cannot change that, right? Like I am Thai, I am born Thai. I am born in this family and I'm very proud of it. And the work of my, my family contributing to the community and trust the people that this family can really contribute to the society. It's one of their choices. It does not guarantee that I will be elected. See, um, again, it's one of my challenge to prove. I'm not trying to prove myself. I'm just trying to do my job. You know, I'm, I'm as passionate as other candidates, MP. He has his, his own story. I have my own story, and time will tell that I am a good MP or not. Not because I am a daughter of this person and I'm a good MP or not. Thank you. Our time is coming to an end. I just want to pose two very quick, quick questions to you both. The first is, as you say, fresh and new, you and, and other uh, members of the new intake from a younger generation, maybe with a less conservative, less traditional way of thinking about things, is there friendship across parties among people like you that bridges the divides between the parties? That's the first, what does that feel like? That's the first question. The second is, just looking forward, what do you think are gonna be the biggest, you know, one, two, or three issues in the parliament over the coming year or so? <laughs> Gotta be me, right? So, uh, I don't know, I try to talk, I mean like if you walked into the parliament mostly like, I think uh, middle uh, 50 plus plus, I think I, I would say a lot of uh, old people, I, I, uh, no offense, right? but um, yeah, for young people, I, I kind of talk to a lot of people too, especially like, I don't know why I don't talk to Phuya Thai a lot, because I talk to all the Phuya Thai people, but I talk to uh, Palang Pasharat, uh, younger generation, because I think Palang Pasharat, they have many first time MP, right? But I, I, I also uh, have my uh, my cousin in Phuya Thai party too, uh, uh, MP uh, Shuwit Pitak Pohan Lop, uh, happy to be my uh, uh, kind of like a brother, like my brother. So I uh, go with him and I talk to everyone. It, actually, I talk to everyone, but yeah, I think it's quite hard a little bit that for for us, especially young people, to talk to everyone because there are many. Uh, we don't know the rule yet, but then uh, I think the time when we have some of the new um, new rule books about the parliament. 
and we will have the committee so that we can work together uh, furthermore and we, we will uh, do the ice breaking about the, all the party but now the, the wound is still fresh and yeah but it's getting light, uh, a lot better the, uh, now you know like we start to talk more or we like come and see each other and on the same event and then like next to, tomorrow if I go and I greeting uh, how far and how far with someone they, they are easy to is interview to everyone it's kind of one by one right and in the parliament we don't have only the assembly the the, the legislation assembly but we have like uh, uh, the parliamentarian uh, friendship group you know Thai New Zealand that I'm um, happen to be a secretary you know that's then you can meet another party and you can uh, perfect your lobbying skill you know like oh what for me to be a secretary of this uh, friendship group or something so the the bridge is crossing and uh, as I told by the the senior parliamentarian you know like sometimes they, they go and go abroad together in the same uh, committee you know at that time the party doesn't matter but I would admit that in the, in the House of Commons, in the lower house, the political uh, party, uh, you know, agenda is very strong. It's unlike the Senate or the the, 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 the council, the community council or in the provincial council, you know, that they tend to work together more, you know, especially like Bangkok, that, that I know, yeah. And the second question. Yes, so the, the biggest issue or two you think will face the country, apart from relaxing the beer laws, of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, in my opinion, like, what we're facing in the... F I would say, I don't know what the year, but it's definitely will come. We will have, like, um, uh, we will uh, dramatically change uh, this society or this world forever because uh, coming up of AI and automation, Imagine like, you know, you have someone like better than you, uh, the computer AI thinking for you and you have the hand that can work 24 hours without sleeping and working for you. Mm -hmm. So I think at that time, you know, who control the mean of uh, production will rule the world, you know, will rule the, the, the country. So I think it will be opposite way. I, I think in a society like that, we should have like uh, so uh, we should become like a social welfare state, and uh, you know people should have like UBI or universal basic income that people will get paid by government. Or uh, example, I will call this. I don't know that anyone think about that, but I will write a book about this. It will call. It probably will call how people how people manifesto. <laughs> I would call it like that di direct. Uh, uh, direct democratic socialism that you know at that time when you have UBI and you people will don't need to work and they will have more free time they can vote directly to issue the law they can be government by themselves they can use their democracy because they have time to learn things and I think uh, that 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 thing is therapeutic you know but I think it will come one day before after I pass away you know but it definitely come because one day you don't need representative anymore because you can vote any law when you wake up you can vote on your phone why we need MP you know why we disagree with anything we have blockchain we have everything you know and, and what if the world not creative anymore okay if you produce anything you can have like uh, five percent of total revenue or profit Five five percent of that is enough, or even one percent. We will call those people the one percent people because they produce ninety nine percent for everyone and keep only one percent for themselves, which is like a lot enough for them. You know that. Sorry that I sound too uh, sci fi with them. <laughs> no, I I, I didn't think like that. I wait wait for my wait for my writing. Okay, Kun Fang, you have the last word. Um, actually, I, I think the parliamentary meeting is, is a form of like stage play, right? Every party has their mission to do every week. So each MP will play their roles mm -hmm. against each other. 
um, screaming at each other. But then once you get out of that room, everybody's a friend because everybody shares history together. You know, a lot of people from Pua Thai party, they move to another party. So it's more of like friendship that we have at the same time. So everybody pursue their own political career, but we can, we have this kind of friendship. Like you said, I am friend with a lot of the new MPs from every parties, and we talk the same language, and that's a good sign, right? <laughs> no more fighting, no more sides, no more colors. And you mentioned the 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 upcoming uh, problems that could could. Uh, that we could encounter. I think it's the matter of uh, like um, standards and law enforcement. For example, uh, the prime minister that he has this problem of wow, uh, giving pledge to, to uh, becoming the prime minister. And according to the constitution, he's supposed to say the exact words, right? If not, then he violates the the, the law. And if if he decided to ignore this problem, it means that he ignores the constitution. And what if that happens? And the first person, the highest person, violate the constitution. I can't. I I cannot imagine. What's gonna come next? Everything's gonna go to the court, right? And the court will say what is right and what is wrong, what is uh, doable, and what is. See, um, it fears that it fears me that if there are double standards, there will be some problems in in the parliament and for the rest of his uh, term. For starters, so let's see what what is going to happen to the the pledge that the the prime minister uh, issue that that he has. Well, I think it's a, a source of hope and optimism for Thailand that uh, such outstanding representatives of the new parliament uh, are able to share such interesting views so candidly. So. Um, please join me in thanking Kun Tao, Kun Fang, and uh, she had to leave us a little early, Kun Tanakan as well. And the conversation will continue at the bar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Say hi. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I do use mine, so that would be excellent.